before I started my business. I also feel like these five steps that I took will help you pursue your purpose, whether it be a business, whether it be honestly anything that you want to do. You can be working on your online clothing boutique. You can be working on selling lip gloss. You can be working on selling hair. It does not matter. Any business that you want to pursue, I believe that these five steps that I took and that I'm sharing with you guys will help you succeed. So. First things first, I realized in the past when I sat there and told people my plans, told people what I want to do, told people what I'm going to launch, it never happened. And it's just like a lot of people that I know that was rooting for me, had my back, supporting me. It's just like, okay, girl, when is you going to drop it? When is you going to launch it? When is you going to... Because they know I've had these plans. It's just like, look, you all would never know at this point because I've jinxed, my, jinxed myself too many times. So, instead of me just launching my business and having it already there and having it already started and then telling you guys my process, I thought, hmm, as I'm going through the process, why not take you guys on this journey with me? Why not let you guys see the ups and downs of what it's like to be an entrepreneur, especially one that's starting from ground zero? So... The first step that I took before I started my business and before I did anything was I put God in the middle of it. I prayed over my business. I prayed for my business. I prayed about my business. I asked God, like, if this is my purpose, let it be your will. Speak through me, speak through my business, and let this business be yours. It's his. It's not mine. It's his. Yes, you see me and my flesh coming to you all and speaking to you all about everything, but best believe everything that I'm doing, God is doing through me. You know, I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing everything that I can to give back to God. I'm doing everything that I can to help somebody out there. Everything that I'm doing is not for myself. I'm not living for myself because I know there's somebody out there just like me that's hesitant that's taking the time, that's saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, or yes, I can, no, I can't, yes, I can, no, I can't, or is battling whether they should start it or not, especially during this world pandemic. When it started, I was like really hesitant on starting my business, but people that God has started putting into my life, shows that I've been watching, sermons that I've been watching, mentors that I've been having, people that I've been talking to to pray for me. It's just like always giving me a sign to just pursue your business regardless. And it's just like, although I want to just do for me and give me this and give me that, I got to realize I have to sacrifice everything that I want for what I need. If I see my future self in this position, I have to work on it now. You can't sit here and just be like, okay, I'm gonna start a business and I'm gonna be this boss and I'm gonna be all big and don't put no work into it, okay? So that's the key thing to your success in anything in life, within your self-love, within your relationships with family and friends and your spouse or whoever within, yes, mommy. All right, y'all, right, I'm back. So like I was saying, the key to your success in anything in life, in anything, not even just your business, in your life overall is literally having God steadfast in the middle of it. With everything surrounding him, God can take control over everything and just li literally put you in the right path. <laughs> you know, follow him and you will be A-OK. -okay. You know, have faith and you will be bomb to the T. Believe in yourself and stay consistent and you will skyrocket. 
believe me you will like it yes it took me time to get here but because i've been there done that i'm able to say what i have to say to you all today and everything that i do is not for me everything that i do is to give back to god everything that i do is also to give to you all my babies my friends like y'all all i have wearing that like literally y'all are my friends you can text me whenever i don't care but everything that i do is for you all i have a message to bring and that is my purpose to sit here and save save lives save souls and help somebody get themselves out of the bottom because i've like yes it's like i'm going on a rant right now but let me be honest with y'all i've fought anxiety depression um battling my own self not by myself but i fought it without going to the doctor without going to therapy without taking medication without anything because why i had god on my side i prayed about it i read my bible and i did what i had to do and was healed yes i'm still going through my healing process but i'm more healed than i was before to be able to sit in front of this camera right now and talk to y'all okay all right so step number two of course of course of course is to do your research if you don't do your research, how you going to go into something just going off the top of your dome? Yeah, you may feel like you have, what word am I looking for? Yeah, you may feel like you have these expertise or you know what you're doing and you know how you want your business to go. That's all well and fine, of course. Put your taste on your business. Put your spice on your business. Put your spice on whatever you're doing in life and make it your own. But don't go into something ha haphazardly not knowing for sure the steps you gotta take so there's three girls that i did look up like when i was looking up entrepreneurship videos and on the entrepreneur life tag there's three girls that stood out for me for sure that i literally watched videos to the t every day taking notes to see what did they do to get to where they are that i can do to get to where i want to be and those girls are brown skin mommy hey girl she's also my mentor hey girl hey um bougie barbie oh my goodness i love that girl too that girl is like when i say she's the little girl you got a long lost sister and her name is Maine. hey like that's like the little sister i never had like she is lit she is lit. She is about her business. She is about her money. And guess what? She not stingy or selfish with it. She bougie. She bad. And she will help you too. So look those two up. And also look up Nay Nicole. She is helpful too. Like she was one person I really looked at to help with business essentials. Like what do I need? What tools do I need to get? What do I have to buy? What's going to help me? What's the best product? And everything like that. And yes, yeah, she put it out there. Um, bougie Barbie. I know a lot of her um, her business mainly centers around her lip gloss. She also has other things that she's doing and branching off with like hair, cosmetics, and other things to come. But she really bases around lip gloss. So when I watch her, I look at her business ethic. Like I look at how she handles things and how she pushes forward. Um, Brown Skin Mommy, she's doing what I'm doing as well. She has her own online boutique clothing boutique so go check that out um it's called juicy deluxe i will leave that down in the description box below so you guys can also check out her website and get some clothes from her but yeah she's doing what i do so when i watched her i literally watched her videos from part one to part whatever she has now like i've been studying and noticing okay so how did she get her inventory how much inventory did she get at first did she go above and beyond or did she just get the little bit to see you know things like that um while you're researching think about sorry if i'm looking down too much i have my notes right here for you guys so i can talk with you all but while you're researching think about eye catching color schemes what sticks out to you what styles will catch the eye and who you're trying to um and who you're trying to appeal like you don't only want cut like of course you want colors that you love and that fits right with you and that will that you will be proud of putting out there but you also want to want something that's easy to read easy to look at and something that's just like like make me glue to the screen and you want to cater to your customers as well um also while researching look up different clothing vendors and then that like that embody the style that you want me, I love wearing matching sets because I don't like putting my clothes together all the time. So 
majority of my clothes on my line, yes, I'm going to have dresses, shirts, bottoms, and this, that, and the third, but majority of my outfits will be matching sets or jumpsuits because that's what caters to me. That's the style that I embody. So I looked up clothing vendors that cater to that. So instead of just jumping into it and being like, okay, I'm going to buy this, this, and this, and this, and this is cute, that's cute, this cute, they might like that. And then, no. Think about what you want to sell. Think about who you're trying to appeal to and search different, it's endless vendors out here. Search different vendors that embody the style that you want. And most importantly while researching, yes, doing your research is going to make you excited. It's going to make you say, you know, I'm going to start right now. I'm going to start right now. I'm going to spend this. I'm going to spend that. Woo, 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 woo. But do not rush. Do not jump into it. Do your research. Learn your lessons. Take notes. And take your time. Just take your time. I had to learn that over over time because when I first started, I just I literally was jumped into it, created an Instagram page, and everything just jumped into it, and did not know what I was doing, did not know what I wanted. Like my page was all over the place and it looked ugly to the point I just deleted it. Like I deleted everything, that whole Instagram, everything because it's just like that's not. But I, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know who I'm selling to. I didn't know. So do your research, although it's going to make you happy. Just do your research and stick to that. Take your time. Step number three. Step number three may be boring, but it's worth it. Step number three is your planning process. You have to plan out how you want things to go, how you're going to do it, when you're going to release it, and what you're going to do. You want to put as much time and effort into your baby. This is this is your the planning process and the research process is your business in seed form. Think of it as a seed. And the minute that you plant your research and you plant your planning process, it's going to grow. It's going to grow. So take this time to nurture your baby. You know how it takes time for a flower to grow. It takes time for a tree to grow. You have to water it. You have to give it sunlight each and every day. So that's pretty much what you're doing in your planning process. So within your planning process, brainstorm and outline a business plan. If you don't know what a business plan is or how to write out a business plan, it's endless templates out there on Google. It's endless things that you can research and search up and get a feel of, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like. If you aren't sure. It's too many. I'm sorry if I keep spitting, y'all. <laughs> like, I'm really serious about this. Because not only, this isn't only for me. This is for that person out there that's just been sitting there stagnant. And just stuck in that one position of, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. But they're not doing anything about it. So when you're brainstorming and looking at bit different business plans, do not plagiarize and do not copy, but learn from their techniques and find your niche for real. If it's beauty, fashion, figure it out and look for those in your area that's doing what you're doing to see, okay, how do they blueprint their process? How do they plan? How do they do this? What do they write down and how do they stay organized? The second bullet in the planning process is budget your business. If you know you have this much amount of money in your account, make it affordable for you. And don't only buy clothes for yourself because that's not going to help you. You're going to be wasting more money than you're really trying to put into your business sacrifice certain things that you realize okay this is not something that i need every day this is not something i need to spend money on every day sacrifice for what you want you see yourself being something you see yourself being somewhere you gotta sacrifice certain things right now like well right now it's good because I feel like being in this pandemic is like the perfect time to start your business and be a small business on the rise because God has taken everything away from us. You have no choice but to sit there and not spend your money on anything but your business. 
invest into yourself. Third point in planning process, when you get your products, test your products. Ain't nothing wrong with getting an outfit. Like for instance, for me, when I order my inventory and I, I have one bulk of inventory right now and I'm working on the second bulk. But for me, when I order, I'll order a size small, medium, and large. I'll get two size smalls, two mediums, and three larges. The three larges is for one for me. So I can try on the product to see how it fits, if it fits the way that I like it, if it fits the way that works for me, okay, boom, I'm going to put it out there. Or... You can just buy the outfit one time in your size to get a taste and get a feel of what it looks like on you. If it's not what it looks like on you, then you know for a fact, okay, that's a wrap. That's not something I'm going to work with. Or if it comes to you and you realize that this isn't what I've seen online or this isn't how I thought it was going to look, then you know, okay, that's not going to work for you. And if you're not happy with that product, you're not going to be able to push your best effort into selling it. So don't forget, touch your product. Please, make sure you're comfortable with the product that you're selling before you put it out there. The last point in the planning process is to have faith during this process. This process can be so discouraging because you'll see a lot of things going on. And then while you're planning, it'll always seem like, oh my goodness, Everybody else is starting their business. Everybody else has their stuff online. Everybody else is just showing off and showing this and showing that. And I'm going to be there too. But guess what? They had to go through the planning process just like you. They had to get their stuff ready before they even released it and launched it. You will also have these little voices in your head or people around you that's negative or don't want to see you shine or don't want you or don't want to see you reach your full potential and they'll tell you oh no don't do that why are you wasting your time doing this why are you taking so long to research why are you taking so long to plan that's not what you should do you need to go do this you know don't listen to that the more you have faith in yourself the more you have faith in your business the more you have faith that Okay, if I manifest this thing, it's going to come true. It's going to come bigger than what it's going to be. Guess what? You're going to be to where you want to be before you know it. Sorry, right, y'all. My camera just cut off on me all disrespectfully and all that. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I'm going to keep going. And also, the last step or the last point in picking a platform, find a mentor. Find somebody who's already doing what you're doing. Find somebody who has expertise in what you don't know and let them lead the way. Let them help you get that help that you need. Do not go out there with a blind eye thinking that, oh yeah, I'm popped in, I got this and I can do it. Find help. Take advice. Take advice and do not be stubborn. Humble, humble yourself and learn from somebody else who's already been there, done that. Step number five, pick a name you love and can live with and create a cohesive aesthetic style. So, the name that I chose for my clothing company and my clothing boutique, my brand, whatever, is Distinctive 96. The X is there, but the X is silent because I've always been that type of person to put an X at the end of everything, just so I thought it was cute. So that's a little flavor touch of me. Distinctive is because I don't want nobody to be or feel like they're norm or they're average. No, we're all unique in our own ways. And yes, everything on my site, we all may buy and we all may have the same thing. But guess what? We're all distinctive. And we're all going to rock it each and every way, different ways. And we're all going to make it look beautiful, sexy in our own way. You feel me? So I want everybody to know that they are distinctive when they're coming to my shop. And that's something that I love and that's something that I became happy with. The reason why I added 96 is because that's the year that I was born. So it has a taste of me, but it's relatable as well. So don't pick something that you heard on the radio or on a song and just be like, yeah, I like that song and I'm going to put it out there because it's like, okay, it don't feel homey. It don't feel like it came from you. It don't feel like you put much thought into it. Have something that you want your customers to be 
shop distinctive shop this shop that yeah i just got a girl you need to go check out distinctive 96 right now because she is popping they got some nice cute things like have a name that will roll off your customers your guests your friends your family's tongue with excitement and like I said before, something that represents your brand, something that represents you, something that, that represents the message you're trying to get across to other people. Because it's deeper than just the business. It's deeper than that. You starting your business can be the breakthrough for somebody else. You pushing forward and coming out of your darkness and everything could be what that other person needed to say i don't want to be in this position no more i don't want to be like this no more i don't want to live like this no more i want to do that i've always had a passion to do that but i was afraid and i was hesitant but i seen that they did this you can save lives save souls and heal somebody just by starting a business anything that you do just by starting your YouTube channel, just by put, posting pictures, just by saying God bless you or hello to somebody can literally save somebody else's life. I know it's crazy when you think about it, but that's true. We all look up to celebrities, moguls, and all these people out here as inspirations and motivations to do what you do. And they help us to put us ourselves on the platform or the pedestal pedestal that we want to be on because we looked at their life and we paid attention to their story and we was like I can do that too so you can be the key to somebody else's breakthrough just by pushing forward what you want to do having a cohesive aesthetic style is what will develop your brand's personality like you know how we already know London on the track. We already know who made that beat. We already know how his beat sounds. We already know how it's going to go. You know, you already know Young Money's trademark or Meg Stallion's trademark. Have a trademark for your business that somebody will say, oh, yeah, I know where you got that from. You got that from Distinctive. I know where you got that from. You got that from Juicy Deluxe. I know where you got that from. You got that from Bougie Barbie. You feel me? Like, have a cohesive aesthetic style that speaks to you, that shows it's you, and that will speak to somebody else like, yeah, that's their trademark, that's their brand, boom, bow. Last but not least, I have some questions for you guys to ask yourself before starting your business, and I would love to see your answers down in the comment sections below, or even if you want to DM me personally. Question number one. This is what I want you guys to take from out of this. Question number one. Who is your ideal customer? Question number two. What do they love, like, and hate? Question number three. What colors appeal to them? And the last question is, what are the styles of your ideal product? That's it for today. So we are done with today's video, you guys. I hope I was, I hope I was some type of help to somebody. I hope I answered some questions that some of you may have.